All righty, Sean Fury here, wrapping up our segment on uh, life success systems, talking about who can create a life success system. Well, uh, that's the hero. And so we talked earlier about stages of change development. Let's keep going up the ladder here. So let's say that uh, above, we talked all about all the seven uh, roles that people play that perpetuate oppression. Well, the next role above the politician is one I call the sidekick. And this is where it's, uh, a, it's not so much that this, the sidekick doesn't create problems in the way or allow problems to go um, the way that the first seven characters were. The sidekick's thing is that they're not going to let a villain dominate them, right? You never saw Robin from Batman and Robin allowing the Joker or the Joker's henchmen, his fellow villains, uh, you never saw Robin allowing those guys to come and mess with him, right? He would defend himself. That's what sidekicks do. They don't, they don't let people control them in the way that the minion allows the villain to control them, him or her. So the problem that the sidekick has is really just one of practice. They don't have very much practice um, or training you really could say they don't have hero training, just like what you're getting now. Because the sidekick is really not that great at recognizing a threat when they see one, right? So you remember in the Harry Potter movies, you know, Ron Weasley starts out as Harry's best friend and ends up as Harry's best friend. But Ron also starts out as a sidekick, whereas Harry starts out as a hero. And uh, throughout the film, Ron... Throughout the movie series, Ron becomes heroic. And at the end, there's three heroes. There's Ron, there's Hermione, and there's Harry. They're all heroes. So uh, what's Ron's problem in the beginning of the Harry Potter movies? You know, he sees a troll, I think, come breaking into the building and go into one of the bathrooms. And he kind of looks at Harry and says, like, oh, crap, what are we supposed to do? Whereas Harry is already on his way there to solve the problem, right? So Ron lacks self-efficacy or the belief that he can rise to any challenge and meet it head on, right, and live to tell about it, right? So he lacks competency in this task of uh, human ecosystem engineering and recovery operations. In that moment, Ron as a fledgling wizard, right, was not prepared to recover the health and functioning of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, I think it is what it was called, uh, because the troll had created a threat, a situation where there was threat and unsafety, right, fear, and uh, that is not safety, right, that's not getting your needs met, so Harry's on his way there already to solve that problem, to remove the threat he's already assessed it as a threat and he's going to take care of it because he knows he has that uh map to the good life that says these are the 12 reasons to intervene and safety is number two on the list right and they're, they're none of them are more important than the other but i just put it there just you know kind of because people are always talking about how safety is number one and i think it is but i maybe think that uh treating people with dignity is just a little bit more important because if you treat people with dignity, then you're going to be treating them in a way that's safe. So uh, that's just a little tangent. But uh, so the sidekick can improve their confidence by increasing their competence. And there's that you've heard of the competence confidence loop or the confidence confidence loop. The more you increase your competence at performing a certain task, the higher your confidence will be when you try to perform that task. So if you want to be someone who can be like Martin Luther King Jr. or uh, another guardian of the good life, like Harry Potter or Hermione Granger or Katniss Everdeen or Robin Hood or any number of other people, Abraham Lincoln, John F. Kennedy, right? Uh, then you want to increase your competence. And that's what you're doing by taking this training series. You're learning the knowledge of uh, what heroes do and why it matters what they all have in common right they all are guardians of the good life and uh, you're learning about how 
situations don't just happen, they're constructed. Create a system. What are, what are the systems? What kind of system do you want? How do you create it? How do you recognize when it's toxic? All kinds of stuff. You're probably your brain is overloaded by now. But there's also a whole bunch of skills that you need to have. And I have all those all set up for you. And uh, there's six tasks of the hero that the hero needs to engage in as part of this human ecosystem engineering and recovery operations uh, task. So six subtasks of that larger task. And uh, once you have the right habits, the six habits of the hero, or the seven habits of the hero, we just talked about them, right? Um, you can engage in a way that's collaborative and you have self you have self esteem and you support people who have self esteem and you confront those who sabotage that and you, we just talked about how now you also have uh, self confidence or self efficacy and you can sustain motivation when people try to destroy you that's the seven habits of a hero uh, when you can do those things then you can engage in this task of human ecosystem engineering and recovery operations and be successful at it when you know these next six sub steps, which I'll get into right now.